Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Yesterday, Exposure Software updated their software to version X7. In this video, we're going to talk about what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Exposure X7. There are three main things new in this version of the software. I'm going to do an in-depth demo of one of them and I'm going to briefly overview the other two. Then we're going to talk about that one new thing that I'm going to go into a little more in depth on first. That is a new way to make a selection. For example, I have this image here. You can see I did some global adjustments too. Let's say I want to do adjustments just to the bricks of the lighthouse. This is where this new uh, selection tool comes in. Now what I'll do is I'll just close down that basic panel so we could uh, better see what we're doing. What we need to do, I want to do these adjustments on their own layer. So I'm going to add a new layer. We'll click Add Layer. And then I'm going to open up the Brush Tool. And you can see right here Selection. That is where these new selection tools are. Now I'm going to use the first one, this Polygonal Lasso Tool. And all I need to do to select the bricks is to draw around the edges with the Polygonal Lasso Tool. To do that, just click somewhere, start somewhere. I'll start in the lower left-hand corner and click once. And you can see I put down a blue point. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click again. And I just drew a blue line. And that's it. You just keep going around the edges. And as I do that, you'll start to notice a red overlay is appearing on the lighthouse. That is because it is looking inside of that polygon, looking for the edges and drawing you know, this, this outline and then selecting everything within it. Now, once you lay this down, you could go to any point and click and move it. So you can move it around. You could add new points. Just click somewhere and add a new point like right here and maybe push that up a little bit. So you could add new points and you could do that with the points on here. And you'll notice that when you're clicked on it, like one is active. If we go over on the right hand side, can see that there's some sliders. This first one border width. Um, you notice though the blue line has a certain width to it. If you need to make it thicker because it's maybe not hitting the edge, you can move it to the right. And you can see you make them thicker, you can make them thinner, move it to the left. Also, relative width, I know I said one was active. If I click, you can see it's going to make it thicker and thinner around that active point. And you can see now uh, this is kind of um, maddening to me. It, it disappeared. I think that's a bug in this newest version. Um, if you're using the Windows version of the software, it may not do that. Hopefully it doesn't because you kind of wish it would stay there, those blue lines, but you can see how they kind of disappeared. They reappear when I click on a slider, but it's kind of annoying because what if you wanted to add a new point? It's a little easier when they're there, but that's beside the point. Uh, you could expand uh, the selection. So if I move it way to the right, you could see how it's starting to over select into the sky. Or if I move it to left, it will shrink it in. So if you need to touch up the selection, you could move that slider. Also, if you need to reset any slider anywhere in Exposure X7, just double click right on the slider and it will reset it to its default position. At times, uh, when you do a selection, you'll have a little white kind of thin mat around the edges of your selection. And depending on what you select, sometimes it's black. But either way, you could remove it with this matting slider right here if you have that. Opacity. Most often when you're selecting something like this, I'm selecting the bricks. I'm going to do 100% adjustment on it. But if you want to fade that adjustment, you could turn opacity down. You can see how it's making the red less intense. And that will actually adjust, or that will affect the actual adjustment you do. Um, below that, we have color constraints. If you want to just affect a specific color inside of your selection, you would open here. And most often, you would get the eyedropper tool and start out by clicking somewhere within your selection. And you can see how the red overlay now is patchy because it's trying to match the color I clicked in. And then you could adjust that with this color wheel here as well to kind of fine tune it to what the color you want affected. 
Now I'm going to undo that by hitting Command-Z on my Mac. It's Control-Z on a PC because I don't need to use color constraints on this. Um, processing options, you could suppress noise. You could feather the edge a little bit. Uh, you could show the mask. That's the red overlay. If I turn that off, we just get rid of the red overlay. Most often, you'd have that off when you're doing your actual adjustment. So we'll go to the Basic tab now and... See how I turn exposure way up? It's just affecting the bricks. So maybe I want to do maybe a clarity and some contrast or something. Maybe bring exposure down a little bit. Now, if I was starting to get a little white line, I, I'm not. But if I was, that's when you would want to come up here and um, change this matting slider and see if you could get rid of that little white mat. So that is one way to do an, an uh, selection. You could use the polygonal lasso tool. You notice the one I used is the plus. That means I'm adding to it. If you wanted to subtract to it, you'd use the one next to it. That's the minus. Um, now, I'm going to undo everything I did. I'm going to go to history and go back to the last adjustment, the last global adjustment I did. Because there's another way to get a selection of these bricks. And that's with these next two tools, this circle with the plus in it and the circle with the X in it. Now again, I'm going to add a new layer because I want these adjustments to be on a new layer. Close down basic tab so it's less noisy. We'll get this. Now those of you that are familiar with the NIC collection, specifically control points in some of those NIC applications, when you lay down a control point, you have this big circle and you have a point in the middle. When you lay it down, what the application does is it looks at the tone texture and color directly under that point where you click. And everywhere within that circle, it tries to match the tone texture and color. And then any adjustments you do will be done on similar tone texture and color. This is what this is similar to. For example, if I click right here, you'll notice there's a circle there now. That's kind of the circle of influence. And where I clicked, it's looking at similar tone texture and color to, um, a, you know, you know, add that. And you could see the overlay is patchy. It's, it's not perfect, but you could bring the width out. Let's say that circle wasn't big enough. You can make it bigger. If I start getting too big, it will start to affect the sky. You can see how it's starting to get on the sky. So you could bring it down. You could also do the base width, which is similar. There's actually two circles, or the three circles. You have that little one right in the middle where the plus sign is. Then you can see there's another circle out there. That is um a hundred percent so it's looking at all the tone texture and color from that plus sign to that middle circle but if i start getting that middle circle out onto the sky which i was it's starting to affect the sky then that outer circle is the um the feathering of the edge so you could do it that way and you could just keep clicking and adding them or you could actually paint with this as well so you could just click and paint and just like this and try to paint all the brick you want to paint and see what it does. You could see it over selected. You could try to then use uh, the bring it down, the base width down, bring this down, see if that affects it. Uh, that did a pretty good job, actually. Uh, what you also could do is you could get the circle with the X in it and you could click somewhere you want excluded. So don't select the sky. So you could click out here around the edges and do that. You also could get this little tool at the very end and just draw around the edges like this if you want. You could also use that, um, that tool as well. And you can see we got a selection that way. So I could go down to the basic tab and then turn exposure up or down. And it's just affecting the bricks. In this case, let's show the, turn the mask off. We'll add some contrast. Bring that down a little bit. Add some all right, so we just very easily now could select objects. You could select a person's face. You could select a lighthouse like I did. You could select an animal like a pet, dog, cat, things like that. So there's, um, you know, I think these are really powerful tools that have been introduced in this um, version of the software, and they're welcome additions, in my opinion. Now, I mentioned there's three things total, and I'm going to just mention these other two uh, very quickly. Let's close that down. One is workspaces. If you go down here in the lower right-hand corner and I click, you can see that there's a number of different workspaces. I'm in the editing workspace. 
There's also like a retouching workspace. You can see that different things open up to help you do retouching. There's a culling workspace. There's the default workspace, which you have the film strip along the bottom. You also could um, create your own workspace. So you go down here to customize workspaces. And I'm going to do this in another video uh, so that you could actually uh, move things around. So you could have your basic tab maybe further down or your color tab further up. Or maybe you don't want your folders tab here. You want it up towards the top or whatever. And you can move things around um, to create your own customized workspace to help you work more efficiently in Exposure X7. So again, this is new. Uh, well, well, the workspaces is new. That customization was there before. but um, So we could um, do that in a future video. We'll talk about that. The other thing that is new is they've uh, enhanced and improved the crop tool. Uh, there's a lot more um, options for cropping. And one of my favorite new options is the overlays. So we have this now rule of thirds overlay and you have the golden ratio overlay. You have the golden spiral overlay and each overlay will have its custom set of adjustments. So you could stretch this to the edge. You could mirror it. You could flip it. So you could move this one specifically how you want it a uh, golden triangle um, you can mirror it so you can just flip it uh, let's see there's the diagonal so those of you familiar with Lightroom Lightroom has all these as well and there's an alignment grid and so on so that is a welcome addition as well so those are the three main things found in this latest version of exposure Exposure X7, and um, I'll, we'll have a future video where I'll talk about workspaces a little more in depth. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.